Good afternoon and welcome to Investor Schooling Live, coming to you from Market Street in the great city of Philadelphia. I'm Phil Falcone here with Larry Steinhaus. We are the founders of Investor Schooling. Get ready to learn real estate and stock option investing. Call us with your questions now. The phone number is 855-939-1137. 855-939-1137. That's right. You can call us with your questions now because we're a real live program. So we're real guys from the Philadelphia area doing a live show because we love to talk to people out there and see if we can answer your questions. So just call anytime, no matter what we're talking about. So Investor Schooling is located in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, serving the Philadelphia area in a real brick-and-mortar building. So we have you have a couple of real estate guys right here in town that can teach you this business. We do it for real. Uh, you don't have to learn this business from people who fly into town and book a gigantic hotel conference room and then split with your money right after the weekend's oh. over. Wow. <laughs> okay. We are local guys accessible to our students, a minimum of two nights per week. You want to learn this business from people who live it every day. What's up, Larry? What's going on up there, out there in uh, actually Facebook Live land too, aren't we? We are Facebook Live right now. By the way, if you're watching, uh, if you're listening to this show on the radio, you could actually go to Facebook Live and you could actually watch us on Facebook Live as well. I want your pen. You want my pen? Okay. That's actually my pen. Sorry. He, 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 Sorry, you know, people. He yeah. took my pen. He took. I took his pen, and you know, it confused me. I, I know I was saying something about Facebook Live, right? Okay. So we actually have a fan page. If you want to go to, fa if you want to go to the fan page on Facebook Live, it's actually Investor Schooling Live is the name of the page. So you could actually go there, and you can, and you could join that page, and whenever we're on the air, you'll be able to see us there as well. Uh, of course, you can always connect to Phil or I on Facebook as well as long as we have some openings for friends. I know I have close to 5,000. You probably have close to 5,000, too. So if somebody from Philadelphia who's a real estate investor wants to be my friend, I'll get rid of a real friend for that friend. But just don't get rid of me, Phil. Well, you I'm always thinking about, you know, possibly <laughs> getting rid of you. <laughs> Only my posts lately all about, uh, what's that thing that's going on? What, what was that thing that's going on right now? Uh, some kind of virus. Yeah, what's some kind called? of virus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it yeah. called the uh, Miller Lite The Miller Lite virus. virus. Yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. I, I, I wonder if we could actually go through a day without talking about the coronavirus. I, I wonder if that's even possible. Well, you blew it for today, that's for sure. Well, we actually need to talk about it because it's very relevant to the stock market. In fact, I also believe... It's very relevant to the real estate market. So I think we need to talk about it uh, quite a lot, unfortunately, or fortunately, really depending on how you want to look at it. Because uh, I, I really believe there's lots of great ways for us to monetize the coronavirus. And I'm not talking about buying toilet paper and selling it. I'm not talking about buying hand sanitizer and selling it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what the future economy is going to bring. And if you're in the right place and you do the right things now, you will be well prepared for what's going to come in the next year or two, which was due to come anyway, by the way. I mean, just so you guys know, I mean, I've been saying this for a couple of years, that 2021 was going to be the end anyway, and we're pretty close to it. You know, 2020, I've been saying, would be the absolute last best year of real estate. Actually, I said last year was going to be the last best year of real estate. This year is still going to be good. The following year is going to start to go down, and, we need, and I believe that this is just the catalyst and or the – gasoline for the fire of the catalyst that's going to bring it down, but not enough. It's not going to be a 2008 scenario, and we'll talk about that in, in a little while, too. But if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to call in, 855-939-1137. You can ask us questions about real estate. You can ask us questions about the stock market. You can ask us questions about stock options. Anything that has to do with money, you can ask us questions. So we're going to be talking about a lot of cool stuff about that today. And, you know, I, I'm sorry, but that's really where we need to go. We need to really talk about that coronavirus okay we got a couple other things we could talk about too so we were going to talk about how do you determine what strategy to use when you're talking to a seller so if a seller is interested in selling you their house and you're you're a home buyer if you're a real estate investor i'm going to give you some pointers on how to identify the appropriate deal the appropriate strategy for buying their house another thing we were going to talk about is how can you prepare financially for the coming pandemic it's not going to be a pandemic. 
Dun, dun, dun. All I right. used it, a it's word. A, it's That's already it. a pandemic. It's already right. out there. Okay. And uh, we're also going to give you our stock option picks of the week, which we always do at the end of our show. So you want to stick around for that, and you're going to hear what we're going to be investing our money in next week. Uh, we have a couple of questions that were emailed in this week. Uh, we have some shy people who don't want to call us at 855-939-1137, but they are willing to email us. The email address is info at investorschooling.com. Info at investorschooling.com. So if you have a question, you can send it in. A couple of the questions that came in this week. Is the danger in the stock market over? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> You're going to have to wait till our last segment to find that out. I, 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 and th- I'm not I think finished. our laugh was the answer, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the other question was, uh, what bargains do you like? Okay. Well, you're definitely going to yeah, find that talk, out. Yeah, we're talking about that. Segment. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, somebody emailed us and asked, should investors get a real estate license? We certainly have an opinion on mm-hmm, that. Absolutely. We will fit the answer to that question into this show. So, anything else you want to talk about? Just want to make sure everybody knows to call in because it's kind of fun. We love it when people call in and ask questions. It puts us on our toes. It lets, us, lets you see that we can answer your question on the spot. 855-839-1137 is the phone number. Please call in. Of course, also, if you want to find out more about Investor Schooling, you can go to InvestorSchooling.com, InvestorSchooling.com, and you can actually sign up for a class this Thursday night, and we promise you that we will have hand sanitizer, and we have soap in the bathroom, and we have... Toilet paper. We do. Uh, we do have lots of toilet paper. But you can only use our toilet paper. You can't take it with you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I was why wondering we... about that, too. How many people have been stealing toilet paper from restaurants? we got a few minutes before we go to break. Why don't we answer one of these questions? Like, Larry, what's your opinion on should investors get a real estate license? All right. So if you're a real estate investor, it's actually a great idea to get a real estate license. I, I, there's, you know, you get these people all the time, and they have their concerns. They say, "Oh, if I get a real estate license, then I can't wholesale," which is absolutely not true. They say, "Oh, if I get a real estate license, then you know, then I feel bad about taking a deal from somebody." Well, well it might be true at certain real estate agencies. Well, that's true too, and you know, and, and what Phil's getting to is, look, we happen to have a real estate agency that Phil and I own. It's called the Investor Brokerage, and if you want to check that out, you can go to theinvestorbrokerage.com, and we. We actually, it's funny, we actually deal with only investors. And and I'll be honest with you, like a friend of mine, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine called me up the other day and he asked me my opinion on a price of a house that his real estate agent is listing. And I was like, you know, which house is he? He goes, oh, it's my primary residence. And I said, well, you know, I said, you know, I could list it for you if you want. He goes, yeah, yeah, I know, but that's not really your thing. And I actually looked at him and go, yes, that's really not my thing. My thing really is investment properties, and he wanted to be with a real uh, a real estate agent who specializes in in uh, you know half million dollar plus houses. So so when you understand that we specialize in investment properties, it's a good thing. It's actually a great thing. I mean, most investors will buy seven to ten properties a year once they get going, and they're buying them from you instead of waiting for a person to buy one house every seven years. You've got one person buying houses, seven houses per year, which is kind of great. But the other great thing about having a real estate license is, number one, but most importantly, MLS access. You have access to the MLS. It's amazing. You know, when you, when you want to do comps, you, you could go on Zillow and you could do them, but they're not as easy to do on the MLS. I could do, and somebody, some of you guys have seen me, some of you guys have gone to some of the Philadelphia real estate investment groups, and you've seen me do comps in less than five minutes where I can tell you the exact price of a house in less than five minutes of what my maximum allowable offer would be and what that pr- house will sell for after it's repaired or the after repair value. And I've really come down to a system that I use on the MLS that takes me seconds to figure it out. So that's a, another great reason. And of course, lastly, look, I, I'll be honest. I mean, I'm not really active. I, I, I mean, I happen to be the broker at the investment brokerage and the agents call me up all the time and they say, hey, you know, help me with this deal, help me with this deal. And I, of course I do it, but I don't have time to actively go out and find deals. And last year, I think I did $45,000 extra money just because deals fell into my lap to the point where I'm like, do I have to list your property? All right, I'll list your property. Do I have to go find your property? All right, I'll go find your property. But make sure you buy one today. And, you know, about $45,000 worth of money just fell into my lap because I had a real estate license. So that's why I think it's smart to get a real estate license. What do you think? (laughs) Yes, I agree. (laughs) Um, I typically, my story is pretty simple, okay? So I'm a full-time real estate investor. 
But I do have a license because I need to use the MLS. It's not only the easiest way to run comps, but it's the most accurate place to get your comps. And it's funny, I probably make somewhere between 15000 to $30,000 a year working as a realtor. But here's the funniest part about that. I don't work as a realtor. I don't take on clients and show them houses. I don't list other people's houses for sale. But because I buy so many properties, and rarely I'll find one that's on the MLS, there's always a, a way to make money off of houses. Because if you have a license, it's almost a no-brainer. If you're doing this for a living, it's a no-brainer you're going to make money off of it. So at this point, we're going to get ready to go to break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about how do you determine what strategy to use when you're talking to a seller. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Investorschooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, Investorschooling.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from Investorschooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to Investorschooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to Investorschooling.com. RSVP right now. Investorschooling.com. See you Thursday. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. We're an executive suite center in Huntington Valley on Buck Road, 67 Buck Road, Huntington Valley. I'm sure you've driven past it. We're right in between Street Road and County Line Road. We have 47 offices in the prestigious address of Huntington Valley. I have offices starting at $5.95 a month. You're probably wondering, Phil, what do I get for $5.95 a month? Let me tell you. You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone numbers. You get the fax numbers. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you. So if your company is ABC Painting Company, hey, ABC Painting Company, how can I help you? Would you like to talk to Bob? Let me get him on the phone. You could be home sleeping on your couch, and I'll patch the calls right to you. What else do we give you? We give you the conference rooms. We give you the kitchen. We give you the mailboxes, the printer, the copier, the scanner, UPS service, you name it. All of the utilities, cleaning service, and best of all, we give you free coffee. Get yourself to Executech Suites. Phone number is 215-942-7701. 215-942-7701. ExecutechSuites.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. What's up, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Investor Schooling Live. Hey, I wanted to shout out to a couple of people on Facebook who are watching us. Uh, I wanted to shout out to, to I, I realize I'm not going to shout out to everybody, but there's a couple who just showed up my phone. We got Megan, we got Fred, we got Damien, we got Cena, we got Michael, a bunch of people, Craig, Kendall. I wanted to thank you all, guys, you, all of you guys for watching us on Investor Schooling Live. Andrew just chimed in as well. And, of course, you can leave us comments on Investor Schooling Live, you can, on the live broadcast as well, and you can ask us questions there. But most importantly, we love it when you call in 855-939-1137. That's 855-939-1137. So if you're in your car you want to ask a question, just pick up your phone, 855-939-1137. And I heard, do we have a caller? We do. Let's pull him up. That's awesome. 
Hey, Bobby, thanks for calling Investor Schooling Live. Hey. Hello, guys. Uh, it's actually Bali. Oh, Bali, um, what's going on, man? How are you? We know this guy. He's actually I'm a student. Fine. And he, we, 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 we know a, that accent, and we know that name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a question. Um, your opinion on hard money. I know a lot of investors use hard money. It's a great question. And... Um, and what is going to happen with hard money when everybody stop lending? Are the hard money lenders, uh, you know, going to roll not. in into a shell and stop in, uh, lending, or do you think they're going to keep lending? I think they're going to keep lending, and oh. I think the rates are going to have a lot of pressure on them to go down. Absolutely. The rates a are going to go down. Pressure. There's no doubt, and there's going to be less right. borrowers. And uh, yep. hard money guys are going to have – Hard times. Yeah, there you go. And uh, look, you, have to, you also understand a couple of them are going to get burned. You know, if the market crashes. Now, look, the market's not – we're going to talk about the state of the market in a little while. But if the market – look, we, we know the market's going to go down eventually. It's, w I still don't believe we're going to have a 2008 experience. We're going to have a market go down. So some people who have, who have bought borrowed money from hard money lenders are going to make mistakes. They always do. They always have. And if now their mistakes are going to be really costly. Where if you made a ten thousand dollar mistake, you could probably come out of it fine. But if you make a ten thousand dollar mistake now, that might have been all your margin. It might even put you in the negative now, and the borrower or the person who invested in the real estate is going to have to decide whether they still want to be in that property or not, or whether they want to say, "Listen, you know, or Mr. Hard Money Lender, here's the keys. Good luck. Sell it to somebody and try to get your money back." And I think that will happen. And we have a couple of good friends who are hard money lenders, and you know, I'm curious to see what their take is on it. Matter of fact, if they're listening, if they feel like calling in or, or commenting, that would be great. But if they want to be on the show one day as well, they can also be on the show. We can have a conversation with them as well. So if you're a hard money lender and you want to talk to us, uh, you can also give us a call at the school. Or you can uh, you can write to info at investorschooling.com and, and find out more. So so real quick, Bally, what do you think of us? <laughs> Uh, I think you guys are great. Thank you, um, man. I appreciate it. I, I, I get that question all the time because a lot of people reach out to me because they know somehow they see my video or whatever, and they say, hey, what about this guy, Larry? I don't really know about Larry. I'm like, <laughs> he's a good guy. He's just That's his character. That's what he does. To, <laughs> you know, to, you know, but he's not really that arrogant. He really tries to help you. So, Man, did, did, he, so, did he just say uh, that people call me uh, arrogant? Man, it's almost like yeah. he knows about your disc <laughs> test. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, 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 don't get into that. <laughs> just real, just real quick, Bally. I took a personality test, and it and it <laughs> rated you on your dominance factor. And I came in with a ninety-four, and I thought to myself, "Well, nobody's gonna get higher than that." Larry took the test, and he scored a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Right. So no matter what yeah, I yeah, do in life, yeah. I can always say that Larry is a bigger jerk than me. Well, you could say – you could say. well, yeah, you really can't. You can't, 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 can't explain it. You're right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, right. So, all right. So cool. So, so uh, yeah. So I'm, gl I'm glad we answered your question, and hopefully we'll see you in class. I'm looking forward to talking to you again. I miss you, man. Yeah. Yeah, we got to talk. Yeah. All right, Bally. Um, thanks for calling in, sure man. Okay. Thanks for calling the show. We'll talk to you some other time. Bye. All right. So we've got a bunch of questions, actually. Everybody is uh, sitting here going, where's the market going on Monday, in my opinion? When's the trend running into a place of fear? Go, go the other When the trend is running into a place of fear, go the other way. Some comments. Uh, are we ready to talk about the market, or we want to talk about something else first? Well, I mean, we got a whole segment dedicated to it. Actually, two segments dedicated to it. So why don't we talk a little real estate in this segment here? Yeah, let's talk some real estate first, and then we'll get into the market in a minute. All right, so let's talk about your real estate investor. And you're driving down the street, and you see a house that looks terrible, and you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to go uh, – I'm going to get out of my shell. I'm going to get out of my car, and I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to knock on the door. And you're because you're smooth and you're a good talker, you're going to end up in the living room discussing with these people the fact that you might want to buy their house. I'm going to give you some ideas of things that you want to think about. All right, so one of the questions when you're – Talking to people, you're going to ask them, well, why are you selling the house? And that's going to reveal the circumstances that are causing them to sell the house. And you've, you've knocked on their door because you could see clearly that their house is 
possibly in need of a lot of repairs. Maybe there's a blue tarp on the roof. Maybe there's a pile of newspapers. Maybe the grass hasn't been cut. Maybe the snow hasn't been shoveled, even though I haven't seen snow this winter. These are, these are telltale signs that something's wrong, and those are the kind of houses that you want to knock on the door if you can. So one of the things I might say is, you know, tell me what's going on. Why are you selling the house? Why would you be interested in selling the house? And, and that will reveal some data, and then you can start asking them questions like, a really important question is, hey, do you have a mortgage on the house? Now, if they have a mortgage on the house, let's just say that, you know, the house is worth 200 grand approximately because you're familiar with this neighborhood, and they reveal to you that they owe like $185,000. A very simple question I would follow up with there is, hey, would you sell the house for what you owe on it? And if the answer is yes, then I want you to go in and talk about taking over the mortgage payments. That's right, taking over the mortgage payments. The strategy is called Subject 2. We teach it at our school, investor schooling, all the time. And if you want to learn how to do it, you better get your butt to investor schooling so we can teach you. We have all the contracts for it. We have all the experience and the knowledge to teach you how to do this kind of strategy. So imagine if you could just buy somebody's house and do nothing but make payments on their existing mortgage. And that mortgage has already been seasoned because maybe they've been paying on it for 15 years. And if you know how an amortization schedule works, in the beginning, you pay a $1,200 payment and like $15 goes to principal and all the rest goes to interest. And on the back side of the mortgage, it flip-flops the other way. So if you can get to pay someone else to pay the first 15 years and you get to pay the second 15 years, my friends, you have negotiated one heck of a deal for yourself. Not only are you going to pay this house off in 15 years, but you're going to get the maximum amount of principal pay down while you do that. And guess what? You're not even paying that mortgage. Who's paying the mortgage, Larry? The tenants are paying the mortgage and the interest and everything else. <clears throat> what a brilliant concept. You mean someone else can live in a house and pay down $600 a month principal that yep. comes to you. What a bargain. So we have dozens and dozens and dozens of people going to work every day to pay our mortgages. Think about that for a minute. We have dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of people going to work every day to pay our mortgages. That is called real estate investing. That is called the most brilliant way to become wealthy. And that is where you need to be. No matter what the economy is, you need to be a property owner and you need to be a landlord and renting properties. Yes, you do. So here's another way that you can get rich in this business. You can just practice the strategy of buying and holding. So you look for properties to buy, you buy them and you hold as many of them as you can. And if you, if you grab yourself a couple of properties a year, in 10 years you might own 30, 40 properties. And those 30, 40 properties over the course of your life will appreciate in value most years. And at some point you're gonna find yourself easily a multi, multi-millionaire just by buying properties, keeping them, putting people in them, and managing them. And I can tell you that, I mean, at one point, I owned enough properties that you would think it was a real pain in the butt to manage. But it isn't. You rarely hear from your tenants. When you do, you're going to hear from this guy or that guy. The ones that call you too often and create too many problems are the ones that you find a way to get them out of your houses and put somebody else in there. It, it, it's not that difficult of a business. The, my wife right now manages over 100 tenants, and she takes care of all that stuff without even my assistance. So uh, it can be done by anybody who has a desire to achieve success in life. Let's talk about one more strategy when you go into a seller's house. Same scenario. You see a house, and it looks like it's, uh, it, it's not being taken care of very well. It looks like an older house. And it's not in bad shape, but it's run down, and it needs money being put into it. And you knock on the door, and you talk to them, and maybe it's an older couple, and that couple is uh, getting ready to downsize. They don't need this big house anymore, and the reason the house is looking run down is because they didn't have the money to fix this house up over the last 10 or 15 years as they, uh, as they got older. And you ask them if they have a mortgage, and they tell you no. Okay, so we don't have a mortgage. We paid our mortgage off, right? 
And in that kind of scenario, this is something where you want to recommend seller financing, meaning that you're going to convert their ownership in the house into the bank. They're going to become the bank. They're going to hold a note and a mortgage secured against the property as collateral. You're going to own the house, and you're going to make payments to those sellers. Now, you might think to yourself, why would somebody do that? Why would someone do that? Well, I'll tell you a great reason somebody would do it. When people get to retirement age, their biggest fear, besides their health, is income. If, they, if they're getting close to retirement and they're about to give up an income that they've had their entire life, and when they're, when they're reaching retirement age, whatever that may be for them, this is a very scary time for them because they're already earning less than they have in the peak times of their life, probably. And then now they're considering getting out of working altogether and giving up a paycheck. They are worried about income. You could buy someone's house for $250,000, and you could say, I'm going to pay you $1,000 a month for 250 months. And you just... Uh, took one of the biggest concerns that they have, right, income, and you just solved their income problem for 20.8 years. Think about that for a second. You helped them convert their house into a 20.8-year income stream of $1,000 a month. Would $1,000 a month help somebody who needs income, Larry? Yeah, I'd say so. It's a pretty nice Absolutely. check. Absolutely. Pretty it, nice check. I wouldn't mind getting that. It, it's an easy, no risk annuity. It's a good way to think about it. In, in fact, I have property that I bought and what I actually had taken over. I, I mean, I did a sell and finance deal because the guy told me when he was selling the property, he was going to take the money and put it into an annuity. I said, let me be your annuity. And he said, okay. And it would work out really, really well. In fact, the funny thing was the number was exactly $1,000 a month. I'm wondering if you're pulling that number from my deal. Actually, I'm trying to buy that house from the seller. Oh, you're doing a different one. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. Yeah. I'm yeah, kidding. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, guys, when we come back, this is a topic you're definitely going to want to hear about. Larry did a 45-minute uh, presentation on how you can prepare financially for the coming troubles that could be coming yeah. to us in this wonderful country that we live in. So make sure you're still here two minutes from now when these commercials are over. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Investorschooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, Investorschooling.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to InvestorSchooling.com. RSVP right now. InvestorSchooling.com. See you Thursday. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. We're an executive suite center in Huntington Valley on Buck Road, 67 Buck Road, Huntington Valley. I'm sure you've driven past it. We're right in between Street Road and County Line Road. We have 47 offices in the prestigious address of Huntington Valley. I have offices starting at $5.95 a month. You're probably wondering, Phil, what do I get for $5.95 a month? Let me tell you. You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone numbers. You get the fax numbers. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you. So if your company is ABC Painting Company, hey, ABC Painting Company, how can I help you? Would you like to talk to Bob? Let me get him on the phone. You could be home sleeping on your couch, and I'll patch the calls right to you. What else do we give you? We give you the conference rooms. We give you the kitchen. We give you the mailboxes, the printer, the copier. 
refrigerator, scanner, UPS service, you name it. All of the utilities, cleaning service, and best of all, we give you free coffee. Get yourself to Executech Suites. Phone number is 215-942-7701. 215-942-7701, executexsuites.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Steinitz from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. Right. I'm excited to be back here. We are at Investor Schooling Live. We are live on the radio. And if you are listening at home, if you're listening on the radio, if you're listening in your car, or you are watching on Facebook Live, you can call in at 855-939-1137 and you can talk to us directly. Hey, I want to just make a shout out to a couple of people watching us on Facebook Live. I, I'll see if I can get everybody. Hey, Robert, what's going on? Hone, man, I haven't seen you in a while. We got Phil, we got Kevin, Eric, we got Vu, uh, Jared, Frank, David, Carl. Ooh, Carl's a, Carl's a big player in the, in the industry. So I want to say hello to everybody out there. Make sure that I did say hi to you guys. So here's the deal. You guys want to know what's going on in the world with the economy and what's going to happen and how it's all going to play out. Well, here's some things you should make sure that you do. Look, the deal is, and I said it before, the reality is we are definitely going to have a financial drop. It's not, it may, I mean, look, they call, they technically call it a recession right now, but it's really not. I, I mean, I, you know, we know what a recession is. A recession, is, you, it feels bad too. At the moment, it doesn't feel bad. You know, if you had some money in the stock market this week and last week and the week after, you definitely have less money, but it hasn't affected you yet. So the recession, the technical recession is a 20% drop in the stock market. We've hit that. That's fine. Uh, well, not fine, of course, but that's not really what we where we are right now. Where we are right now is we're still feeling good. Now, we're a little nervous that we're all going to get sick, which I don't really believe I'm going to get sick, but whatever. I definitely don't believe I'm going to die. That's definitely my... You don't believe you're going to die? I don't believe... Oh, I don't believe gonna, oh wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me, let me be that. clear. Let me be clear. I, I know I'm going to die. I just don't believe I'm going to die from the coronavirus. That's pretty much what I don't believe. <laughs> So I, I, I want to make sure that, that you know, that we, we're clear on that one because that's confusing some people right away. <laughs> All right. I am eventually going to die. And, and I've said this before. I actually want to live before I want to die. So I am going to do everything I was going to do. And here's the really funny part. Or, or I shouldn't say funny, but it is what it is, right? So sports, all sports is canceled. I don't really watch sports, so I didn't even notice it. Um, all, the malls are closing. They're all closing. I don't go shopping, so I don't really notice it anyway. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty, my life is pretty much the same. I don't have kids in school, so they're not going to be home next week. My kids are all adults. You know, they, they got to worry about their kids, but at the same time, they're, you know, my grandson, my granddaughter, I'm sorry, my granddaughter is, is, uh, is not in school yet, so I don't have to worry about that either. So it's kind of not affecting me. I guess that's kind of a selfish way to look at it, but that's okay too. It is what it is. Look, here's the deal, guys. If we have a problem in the economy, which is likely, whether it's coronavirus related or not, you need to do some things to prepare for it. We all know that if it was 2008 again and we, could had a, and we were able to go back in time, we know we would buy stocks, we know we would buy real estate, and we know that we would come out of this problem without a problem. I remember a while back, it was, must have been almost 20 years ago, I owned a computer consulting company. And 9-11 and came. And when 9-11 came, my company, I, I mean, I lost contract after contract after contract. And I was pretty much freaking out. And I freaked out to the point where I closed my company. And I have to be honest with you, although I'm really glad that I did in the long run, but at the time, it was a decision that I made based on fear. I also watched my competitors, friends of mine who also own comp computer consulting companies, and I watched them all. And I watched them survive through 2001, tr through 2002, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They all started making money again, like the real money. 
So what I, I'm going to tell you is if you have a business and you think this is going to take you down, don't let it. If you believe in your business, don't let it take you down. It's the same thing with real estate. If you own real estate right now and you're worried, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I paid $100,000 for this uh, real estate and now it's going to be worth $50,000. First of all, it's not going to be worth $50,000. It might be worth $80,000. But if you have two good things behind you, one is some equity in the property. Let's say you, let's say you only financed $80,000 and you've got $20,000 equity in it. Fine, then you've got $20,000 equity in it. Just sit on it and don't worry about it. The other thing you can do I mean, that we teach people to do often is to get money from private lenders. One of the things that happened in 2008 is banks called loans. They called loans not because they felt that you were not going to pay it. In fact, most people that they called loans on were paying it. They were just scared or, the, or something changed and they had to call the loans. Their, rate, their bank rating got bad and they wanted to pull loans off the books. But if you have a private lender, that private lender can't call your loan. You have a date that that loan ends and you have to pay it back by that date or renegotiate it. That's fine. But here's the deal. If you have a private lender, they're not going to call the loan. And as long as you're paying that private lender and as long as you have a couple hundred dollars in, in, um, you know, in extra money that you're making off that property, you're doing really well when other people are going to start hurting. Now, I don't wish hurting on anybody. In fact, I'm really, I'm really upset about this, more about what the financial outcome is going to be a year from now that I am upset about the people who are going to get the coronavirus over the next couple of weeks, sneeze, or actually not sneeze, apparently cough and, and, uh, and then recover from it. Look, yes, I, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to minimize it. It is what it is. You know, people, there will be people who will die, and I understand that. But after that, there's going to be a bigger aftermath. In fact, uh, you know, there are people who are going to be, they're going to be, it's going to be terrible for some people who didn't prepare and or got scared and pulled their money out of the market. You guys have 401k plans that you saw that last week. They got decimated. And you have maybe money in funds that got decimated. Look, you know, Phil and I, we, we're in stock options, and we got hurt. We got hurt the last two weeks, and we got hurt because we didn't move fast enough. I mean, look, when we, what we teach works in a normal market. What we just saw, and even a, even a slightly abnormal market, but what we just saw was so abnormal that no one could prepare for it. And the truth is, we're, not, we're, we're no better than everybody else. Look, here's the deal. Right? You've you got these money managers on Wall Street, and these money managers on Wall Street can't get it right. How are Phil and I going to get it right? You know, we're going to get it close. We think like them, and I'm going to talk to you about some stock picks later on in, in, in this uh, presentation. But you have to understand that there are times where it's going to, you, you know, you may, in stock options, you may get hurt, or in your 401k plan, you may get hurt. But what you want to do is you want to be able to recover. So here's some really great ideas for you to make sure that you are prepared. So if a year or two from now, property stru values start going down, you want to be the buyer. You want to be the one who's out there buying properties. Look, there's a whole bunch of wholesalers out there right now that really, they're not doing anything. I mean, I'm sorry, they're, they're, they're not doing anything, but they're, they do a property here, they do a property there. All those wholesalers are going to be gone. There's going to be the professional wholesalers who have big businesses, and there are a couple of out there that are doing pretty well. They're gonna, their business is going to slow down also. And wholesaling is going to be very different because the wholesaling business is dependent on the buyer, not so much finding the properties. It's depending on the buyer that you find to sell the properties to. And those buyers are going to start to shrivel up. We talked about hard money in a, little, a little while ago. And because the hard money is going to shrivel up, the buyers are going to shrivel up, we're going to have people who are going to put properties under wholesale and they're not going to be able to resell them. But if you want to buy properties and hold them, that's where the wealth is. You're going to make more money in the future if you hold through. Just like I told you about my computer consulting company, you want to buy properties now and you want to hold those properties. And when you bounce out of whatever it is that's coming, you are going to be the guy on top. In fact, we'll even, we'll even talk to you about opening an investor schooling school because you're the guy who we want to be teaching some of our students. I like to be on top. Wow, you just like totally blew my whole groove there. <laughs> well, you've been going for 14 minutes. It's, it's okay. I can blow your groove. <laughs> well, you said it was a 45-minute presentation from the other night. All right, so here's what you want to do. You want to have money. There's two ways to have money. One way to have money is to actually have cash. And I mean cash. I mean maybe even cash in a safe somewhere, maybe even cash in a, in a bank account that has 0% interest, whatever, just some cash. 
Now, that way it's safe, it's put aside. The other thing I talk about is buying silver and or gold. Now, I happen to like silver. The reason I like silver is only because I could get more of it, and it looks cooler. When I put it all together, it looks like it's more. So I like to have silver versus gold, where if I, for every 10 bars of silver, I have one bar of gold. So I like to have silver because it looks like I have 10 bars. It just looks, it looks, just looks neater. Also, my thought is silver will go from 16.5 to 32 faster than gold will go from 1,600 to 3,200. Just my thought. It's okay. Either one is great, great places to be. The other thing is have available credit ready. If you have a home equity, if you have home, if you have equity in your home, right now you want to apply for all the home equity loans you can possibly get and get as much money as you can at that home equity loan. It doesn't mean you have to use it. It just means that it's ready for you. So all of a sudden you have, let's say, a hundred thousand dollar line of credit that you could write off your home equity loan, and a property pops up a year from now because it was it's a great deal. And no one else can buy it because loans aren't there. You're going to be able to buy it. All right, look, the best way for you to find out more about this is go to investorschooling.com. Come this Thursday, and we talk about this stuff all the time. We talk about money. We talk about making money. So go to investorschooling.com, and we will tell you more about this. Go Thursday night. And, of course, call in with your questions at 855-939-1137. Are we heading for a commercial break? Is that the story? Yeah, so when we come back, we're going to come back and give you the actual stock option picks of the week. We're going to tell you what we're going to be investing our money in, so you don't want to miss that. We'll be back in two minutes. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. I'm inviting you to a complimentary class in Langhorn this Thursday night at 7 p.m. I will teach you how to buy ugly houses and make them beautiful. As a bonus, we will also teach you stock option investing. So get your butt to this meeting, 7 p.m. this Thursday night, Langhorn, 215-876-3002, InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. You heard my partner, Phil Falcone, tell you why you should be there this Thursday night to learn about real estate investing and learn about stock options trading. We're telling you right now, you will make more money than you've ever made in your entire life if you learn these two skills. Be there this Thursday night at 7 o'clock in our Langhorn headquarters. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. Pull over right now. Take out your phone and go to InvestorSchooling.com. RSVP right now. InvestorSchooling.com. See you Thursday. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. We're an executive suite center in Huntington Valley on Buck Road, 67 Buck Road, Huntington Valley. I'm sure you've driven past it. We're right in between Street Road and County Line Road. We have 47 offices in the prestigious address of Huntington Valley. I have offices starting at $5.95 a month. You're probably wondering, Phil, what do I get for $5.95 a month? Let me tell you. You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone numbers. You get the fax numbers. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you. So if your company's ABC Painting Company, hey, ABC Painting Company, how can I help you? Would you like to talk to Bob? Let me get him on the phone. You could be home sleeping on your couch, and I'll patch the calls right to you. What else do we give you? We give you the conference rooms. We give you the kitchen. We give you the mailboxes, the printer, the copier scanner ups service you name it all of the utilities cleaning service and best of all we give you free coffee get yourself to executech suites phone numbers 215-942-7701 215-942-7701 executechsuites.com Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. And I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. Hey, what are we going to teach him this Thursday night, Phil? We're going to teach you how to invest in real estate so you can build a basis to get rich. And I promise I'm going to teach you stock options. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. Right, Phil? We've been in this business for 30 years. We have amazing amounts of information to share with you. Get your butt to this meeting this Thursday night in Langhorn. InvestorSchooling.com. Yo, Philadelphia, we're back at InvestorSchooling.live. And what we're going to be talking about today is...
stock option picks of the week. Larry, where are you putting your money next oh, week? Oh, boy. All right. So here's the deal, folks. Believe it or not, I'm going to tell you to buy some stocks right now, not stock options, which is really unusual. What's going on right now is the, the stock options are priced so high that it makes no sense to buy some stock options. Now, I will. there's a couple of stock options I'm going to tell you to buy, but let's talk about some some funds that I'm going to recommend you buy. First of all, Oil U, O-I-L-U, was down to $1.50 the other day. Now, you need to understand that a month ago, this thing was trading in the 20s. So 22, 23, 24, and then all of a sudden it went down to 13. And then now it's at a, it was at $1.50 the other day. Uh, I bought a whole bunch of it on uh, Thursday. I think it was Thursday. I bought a whole bunch of it at $1.87-ish. Now, look, here's why I'm suggesting you buy the stock and not the option. The options were actually going for a buck, but why would you want to pay a buck to have it go to two as a two dollar strike price when you could buy the the actual fund for a buck sixty five, two dollars, whatever it may be? It's it's actually a better buy, and you don't have to worry about time. The problem with stock options is they're time related, so you have to worry that you're going to run out of time. So that's actually a really good one. The other one is JNUG. Wow, this is a fund that invests in funds that have to do with gold. Now, this is a really weird one because a, a month ago, this thing hit hit peak of about 108, 110, and Friday, it went as low as $3.50. Now, I bought some of it going down. I bought some at 22. I bought some at eight. And if it hits $3 again, I'm going to load up on it. But again, I'm going to hold on to it for a while. Now, I don't believe I don't believe we're going to, uh, again, I, I don't believe it's going to hit 100. I don't really care if it hits 100. If it hits 10 in three months, I'm going to triple triple to four times my money. Let's do that. So I would start with that. I would start with some basics. Here's another couple of stocks that are really going to be good in the future, which is uh, CCL and RCL. So CCL is the um, the cruise line. It's uh, oh, I forget. Which, which cruise line is it? Drive me nuts. Royal I, I, Caribbean. No, Royal Caribbean is RCL. And CCL. Oh, Carnival. Carnival. Thank you. Oh, boy. You know, when you get old, you forget the basic things. Right, Steve? Anyway, <laughs> so you wanna, so I would suggest CCL, I would suggest RCL, and AAL, which is American Airlines. Now, these stocks got decimated. Of course they got decimated. They got decimated because nobody wants to travel right now. But part of it also, if you, want, if you understand, the cruise lines actually shut down. They actually completely shut down. This is really bad. Oh, by the way, I'm going on a cruise on the 12th, April 12th. And the mm. cruise lines were shut down until April 11th. And actually, I'm pretty excited about that because that boat's going to be really clean when I get on it. So I'm, I'm actually less worried about getting coronavirus because so you of the You might shutdown. be the only people on that boat. Uh, and that's another thing. I'm also going to be one of the only people on the boat. It's going to be lots of fun. But that's assuming they don't shut it down again. So CCL, RCL, and AAL are stocks to buy right now. And again, the reason I wouldn't buy the, I wouldn't buy the options is they're way too expensive. All right, here's some stock options that are obvious plays. We have social distancing. So what do you think people are going to do with social distancing? They're going to go on social media. Everyone is going to be grouping in social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, all of these companies, even, even, um, even the other Snap, are all going to bounce back, and they're going to bounce back with a vengeance. So Facebook is around 170. It hit, it hit as low as 160 last week. Buy calls on Facebook. Buy calls on Twitter. Buy calls on Snap. But don't buy them with short expiration date. I would look at least six months out. And six months is going to be important because that's when things are going to start to change is six months out. Here's another interesting one that you're going to find amazing. McDonald's. McDonald's is going to be an awesome stock pick. And again, it's going to be an awesome stock options pick. If you go out six to nine months, don't go out short time because short term, the stock market's pulling everything down. But let's think about this. So I'm now sequestered, hopefully not, but let's use an example. I'm now sequestered and I need to get food and I'm hungry. And I'm sick and tired of the cans of tuna fish that I have in my house. I'm sick and tired of the beans that I have. I'm sick and tired of these rations that I put in my house and I'm hungry. Well, I can't walk into McDonald's, but I can go to McDonald's drive-thru. So what do you think people are going to do? They're going to go to McDonald's drive-thru, and they're going to order food. I wouldn't be surprised if McDonald's shuts down their restaurant portion and just does the drive-thru. 
In fact, Phil and I had a conversation this morning with our local, local Dunkin' Donuts. It was funny. But we, let's talk about that conversation, Phil. We had a conversation where we went into we went into the Dunkin' Donuts, and both of us were ask, about to ask the same question, and Phil asked it first. What was the question you asked? Well, I asked the guy at the Dunkin' Donuts. I said, how do you feel about working in a place that a 1,000 people a day probably come in and out of? Doesn't that put you at a dangerous exposure to the virus? And he actually said he sees less people coming in, but he cleans the place up all the time. And then I looked at him and I said, are you finding that there's more people going through the drive-thru? And he goes, oh, yeah, a lot more people going through the drive-thru. And that is the clue. Those are the clues, the little clues that you need to know. So McDonald's will definitely be a play into, into this virus. So those are some really good picks for you. Social media, McDonald's, uh, th- these are going to be the plays. Bank stocks are going to be kind of shaky, but I would say that if Bank of America falls below 20, it might be a good options pick because the options are not expensive on Bank of America right now. So I like that one as well. Hey, I just wanted to uh, – I'm hoping uh, – there was a whole bunch of questions that were on Facebook Live, and I don't know if I got to them all. I'm hoping I answered them all, but we're kind of getting towards the end of the show. And I'm really yeah, you got a couple of minutes. We could answer some of them. Like I'll, I'll give you some of the better ones. Sure. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is the market going Monday, in your opinion? Oh, okay. So that's that's a really good question because my thought will be because the typical yo-yo roller coaster ride that we're having. The I, if I was to bet on it, I'm I'm not going to. But if I was to bet on it, the market will probably be going down on Monday. Now I'm really really looking forward to the days where the stock market moves 200 points instead of these thousand point moves. These thousand point moves are crazy. When the VIX, which is the indicator, they call it the indicator of fear, is anything over 30, it's crazy. It hit 76 or 77 the other day, which the highest it's ever been was in 2008-9 was two was uh, 80. So we are definitely in that crazy time again. Very crazy time again. I would be really careful with with um, you know, with <laughs> with short-term plays and don't worry about Monday if it drops and don't worry about Tuesday if it comes back. Let's start to make sure that we're going to make some money and conserve our money. So you know, you have Dave out here he's talking about doing butterfly options. We don't teach butterfly options. I know exactly what you're talking about, but we don't teach spreads. Because we don't want people to lose more than they could, more than they've invested, and that's, there's a simple method that we teach. And if you want to come to investorschooling.com, we'll teach you that simple method. Instead of making it complicated, we make it really simple that you can make money and have less risk. What do you think, man? Uh, you know, there's uh, uh, Dave is also asking about uh, playing the S and P 500 yeah, sure. VIX. Well, so yeah, so so actually, the so the the spy is actually a good one too. If you know the market's going to go down, obviously you put puts on it. If you know the market's going to go up, you put calls on it. Now, we don't again. We're we're not day traders. We don't teach day trading. Uh, look, I know how to day trade. I don't want to teach it. I don't think it's I, it's it's really gambling, and you're gambling hour to hour on the stock market. We don't teach it. But if you are out there and you feel like having some fun, uh, you could put money on the spy. So look, frankly, on Friday. When you saw the market raise 2,000 points, a quarter to four, you want to buy puts on the SPY that expire sometime next week. And sure enough, you know that's going to go down. You know it's going to go down. There's no doubt in my mind that we're going to have a down day this week. If it's not Monday, it'll be Tuesday or Wednesday. When the stock market stabilizes, like I said, 200 points, that's when things are going to be good. All right, Phil. It's all you now. All right. So uh, I just want to say, uh, you know, it. Thanks to our producer, John Cole, for helping us out with today's show. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor on our show, just email us at info at investorschooling.com. Info at investorschooling.com. We're going to be here every week at 3 p.m. on Sundays, so don't forget to visit investorschooling.com. Put your name and email address in and come to a complimentary class on Thursday night at 7 o'clock, right in Langhorn. Easy peasy stuff. We're going to talk about real estate investing and stock option investing in every class. And if you come in person, you know, you'll get to hang out with us and get to know us a little bit better. We'll even sign an autograph. Yeah, we, we'd be willing to do that, sure. <laughs> so, uh, also, we have ourbuyerslist.com. If you're interested in seeing some of the real estate deals that we're putting out there, you can check it out at ourbuyerslist.com. 
And if you're a realtor who wants to do advanced investor deals and you need to hang your license at a brokerage that will support you in that kind of thing, example, subject to seller financing, wholesale deals, using trust, if these kind of things are things that you've thought about doing in your career, you want to hang your license at investor brokerage. First of all, we have an amazing deal. You just play a, a, a flat fee for each thing that you, each deal that you do, and we support you in your advanced investor technique moves. This is Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. We out of here.